Hi. Today we're going to look at con constructing a 3D model of uh, the roof geometry described in the, um, in the field sketch that you see on screen now. Once we're finished, it will look a lot like this on screen now. Now the secret to this is to actually build it up um, bit by bit, somewhat as the building was constructed initially. We'll do the gable to gable roof, then we'll add the uh, lean-to at the side, add a dormer, and then construct this part of the roof and add these other features. So, um, a few minutes work and the job will be done. So we'll start with a new screen. And instead of using the wall direction and distance dialog box, the, um, the, the method we call tracking the outline, which is what we are inclined to gravitate to because, well, that's what we do most of the time, um, we'll use a, a special function that we've created called gable roof, construct roof, gable roof. It wants to know the start point, and remember, all the time, read the prompts. It tells you what to do. So we'll start at 0, 0, which is the center of the universe. And then we're going to use an incremental function, i for incremental, in the y direction, and we'll go up 52 feet. So that sets the length of the ridge and the direction of the ridge. Now the software wants to know what the, the story is and the slope left and right. And this is the trick with this particular uh, function, is that you can produce gable roofs with different pitches left and right and different spans left and right. And that's the real advantage of this function. Now in this particular case, the job is 12, 12 on each side, but the span is seven foot on one side and 13 foot on the other. So um, eave height is 12 feet. And, and here you can see the length that's picked up by the uh, digitizing the initial location of our ridge line. When we hit OK, um, well, that roof is just built. So, so there we have the roof. The next step is to, uh, if I look at that in isometric view, you'll see what we, we have. There we go. Back to plan view. And now we'll put a veranda on this eave line. Remembering to indicate the side of the flashing line that you want the veranda to be built. So here we go. So last point, first point. So the depth of the veranda, let's look at the drawing, is 14 feet. That's correct. The height at the wall is automatically extracted from the height of the line that you're attaching it to. So it's found 12 feet from, the, uh, from that eave line. Uh, the end preparations will be gables because, well, that's what we've got on the rest of the roof. But notice that we can also put a hip or it could be butting up to another wall. Obviously, that requires different trim. Um, gable each end, that's correct. And the slope of this will be, uh, yes, 412. So if we preview that, that looks correct. We hit OK and it goes in. And as we continue to build this, you'll see it's... Um, quite quickly turning into the roof we, we expect it to be. So um, back to plan view for a minute. Now we're going to do the dormer on the on the right hand side. So we go straight to modify roof dormer and we'll click on the line that we want to plug it into. So that eave line. So this will be a gable dormer. The slope uh, will be 8 to 12. The distance along. Now the distance along is to the center line of the ridge of the dormer. So in this case that will be 20, 30, it's, uh, yes, 26 feet. Good, that's correct. Set back from the eave. Well this will be built right on the eave, so zero. And the width of the dormer is 12.5 plus 12.5, 25, that's good. And the overhang is how far it hangs out, 16 feet. We preview that. And if there's one of these things was incorrect, well you just go in and after you preview, no that's not quite right. This might be 18 feet, and we preview that. We go, yes, that's more like it, and we hit insert, and it goes in. So once again, um, the more we add, the more it looks like the model we're trying to construct, and it's all very quickly achieved. Back to our plan view for a moment. Now, the next part gets a bit tricky. We have to build a part of the roof that actually intersects with, the, uh, with this through uh, two roof planes. And it also, we have to draw it so it starts somewhere out here in fresh air. So what we'll do is go back to our Construct Roof menu. And in this case, we'll, we will use the Track Outline box. But instead of 
starting at the origin, which is where it wants to start, we're going to use the inline reference button. Now the inline reference button allows us to select a reference point from which we will measure uh, to create the new start point. Now re remember to read the prompts. So middle button snap that corner and it wants to know from that corner where is the start point for our new roof. Well in this case uh, this will be minus 24 and in, in Y it will be plus 16. So we hit OK and the start point is drawn. Now we're going to draw this roof so that it ex extends well into the roof almost as far as the ridge and uh, when I measured that on the plan it was about 45 seat feet so we're going to go right 45 and hit enter and then we're going up and this will be the width of it which will be 20 and then we close square so C for close that looks right 45 20 yes and F for finish and now we need to draw everything we need on this one now the slope on this one uh, it's also 12 12 and the E height will be 7.3. Now we get that by measuring the height of the of the veranda. So you use the tool verify button and that will tell you what the E height is. That's the height in Z. Let me show you how we do that. So we go back to our tools function verify. When we verify a line it gives us the X, Y and Z or X, Y and Z so the Z height is the height of the gutter. And that's the height this line needs to be as well. So let's just back out of here for a minute. And we'll do that again. Track outline. Reference. It's useful to do this again. Then you can see what I did. So we're going in the X minus 24. And in the vertical, the F16. We hit OK. We're going right 45, up 20, close square, and finish. That's where we get the 7.3 from. OK. So we hit OK, and we say we want to gable end this end, we want to gable end that end, and we continue when it builds the roof. So now we have a gable roof banging into another gable roof, and we want to have the software calculate where those two roofs intersect and we use the function intersect planes and we're going to intersect all of them and we hit OK and the software constructs the roof. Now it looks a bit of a mess at the moment but don't panic. It's very easily repaired. So uh, what's important though is that the correct geometry has been created. So what I do first of all is um, I need a bit of cleaning up happening here so just use the delete button, draw a box around all that, and all that rubbish will be deleted. Now, the software will only delete entities free to be deleted. It's a very key phrase, free to be deleted. That is to say, if I wish to delete something around here, if it's not entirely contained within the box, it will not be deleted. Well, now that I've got the correct geometry, all I have to do now is go to Smart Lines, reinsert the plane, track around that area. No, not that one, that one. Yes, yes. Yes, and make a metal roof, bingo, it's fixed. Now, notice that this is somehow, it still thinks that's a gable, so we change the line type, make that a valley, so that's going to be a valley line, and that will be a valley line, that one. Beautiful. Back to plan view. Now, that's really starting to look like our model. Um, two things to do now is to generate this little veranda type feature that's stuck in here. So we'll do that as a construct roof, track, flat plane roof. So we're going to draw a single plane, flat plane boundary by, by boundary. So we um, again need a reference point from this corner and it's going to be over 12 feet so it's minus 12 and vertically it's going to be 10. So there's our start point. Now we want this to go into this roof somewhere about here as well. So I'm going to go over there probably about 20 feet. So I'll go right 20. And we'll go up so that it intersects with the rest of the roof. And I reckon about um, 
12 again and close square and finish and the software wants to know the slope now 312 that's correct the e fight we've got from the um, measuring the e for the z height of that line before and it's the same so that's going to be 7.33 and there's no overhang on this so we hit ok and because we're doing a single plane it wants to know uh, where it falls to so that's going to be the eve line and it builds the roof zoom fit right now i want to put another one over there now i could do the same process all over again or i've got a really tricky little way of doing this very quickly and that's to mirror entities so i just draw a box around all of those mirror about a line mirror about that line and there it is that saves a bit of time and now we use our intersect planes function again intersect all those planes and turn all the walls off because we don't need the walls and man that's looking pretty much right on so uh, just zoom out a little bit uh, about there and we'll put the last remaining piece of roof in and we'll do that as a track plane again reference this corner here and the uh, horizontal distance will be 2 and the vertical distance will be 0 because it's going to be right on that edge. We hit OK and you see a start point has been drawn. So I'm going um, up 10, right 20 and close square finish. And this will have a slope of 212 and the e-fight of this is 6 feet. So uh, OK and it pitches to that line there. Well, there we have it. There's our roof. It's precisely the same as the model that we had on our drawing before. Now, a little thing to, to observe, the software has drawn gable end planes. Now, you don't necessarily have to have the gable end planes there, but if they bother you, um, just identify them and delete them, and uh, the software will just look a bit tidier then when you look at it in this view. We do a view, hide lines. And there's our job. Everything we need to know about that is there, and we're now ready to apply material to it. Well, that about wraps up this little tutorial. Um, quite a complicated job, very simple to do when you know how. Um, everything you need to know about that is now available to you, and, uh, and that's what the purpose of this is, modelling stuff easily and quickly. Well, I hope that was helpful. I uh, look forward to speaking to you again when we next do a tutorial on the AppliCAD software. Thank you for your time.